Welcome to AEHelp.com's IELTS test preparation videos. You will now see Geeta from Uttar Pradesh, India score a fantastic band aid for her performance on the IELTS speaking test. After the interview, I will explain with specific examples why she gets this score and where she loses one band. Also, how she can improve. Now watch and learn. Welcome to the speaking portion of the IELTS exam. My name is Adrian. I will be your examiner for this part of the test and I will give you instructions for each of the three parts. I'm recording this for marking and clerical purposes. We are conducting this exam in Kanpur. The candidate number is 73951 and the current time is 14 o'clock. May I see your identification? Yes, uh, here's my identification that I used uh, for registering the exam online and these are my credentials. Okay, exactly. and what is your full name? Uh, my name is uh, Geeta and my family name is Agrawal. Please just call me by my first name, Geeta. Okay, Geeta. For part one, I will ask you a question to get to know you better and some questions on a general topic. What is your hobby? I like to read fantasy novels and playing tennis. And even the last day, I played tennis for two hours with my friends. That was really great. Let's talk about clothes. How often do you wear a jacket? I wore a jacket when it is quite chilly outside and when I'm riding a motorbike for protection. And I wore a jacket this morning because it was quite cold outside. Where do you like shopping for clothes? I like shopping clothes from shops in the market and malls. And I purchase clothes from online. Even the last Friday, I saw a great pair of jeans. Uh, it was cost only thousand rupees, so I ordered them. I usually buy clothes according to what I need and the cost. What do you wear to work? I usually wear semi-formal clothing, as I am wearing right now, because I worked as a teaching assistant. So this is what I wear. What do you wear if it is hot outside, and what if it's cold? If it is like 30 degrees and above, I usually wear short sleeves or dresses. And uh, if it is like 25 or below, I wear sweaters or jackets. Even this morning, I wore a jacket as it is uh, called outside. Do you have any sports clothing? Yes, I do. I do have uh, some tennis outfits and I have uh, bed suits for swimming in the ocean. Has your clothing style changed in the last 10 years and if yes, how? Yes, my clothing style has changed immensely because in the past my parents used to buy me clothes and now I'm buying my own. So I usually wear more semi-formal clothing these days and brighter colors and good quality. That is the end of part one. We will now continue with part two. For part two, I will show you a card with some questions on it. You will have one minute to read the questions, think about your answers, take notes in the one minute if you wish. You have some note paper there and you have your pen. And then you will have two minutes to speak. I will tell you when to start, when to stop. Please do not touch the card. Talk about a place you went to often as a child. Your one minute preparation time begins now. Before part two and part three of this interview, I want to give you a little bit of extra help so that you can improve your IELTS band scores quickly. Gita's strongest criteria for her performance is her natural language using natural vocabulary. To build natural language, it's a great idea to practice with a native speaking tutor. Again, for this lesson, we have partnered with Cambly, a world-class app that lets you speak with a native English speaking tutor 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, anywhere and anytime. In fact, in India, Cambly is the only app that allows this one-on-one -on -one interaction with tutors from Canada, US, UK, or Australia. Take a look at this example interview between myself 
and a Cambly tutor. Adrian, do you work or do you study? I'm currently both employed and I'm learning for my higher education. I work as a... You can specifically select the IELTS program through Cambly so that you practice for the speaking interview. Cambly has given us this discount code to save 30% off three-month plans for people residing in India. You can also find this in the video description. You can choose from three or 12 month plans or pay as you go. Choose the plan that suits your budget. Download the Cambly app today and begin practicing for your next IELTS exam. Now, let's continue with the rest of this interview and lesson. Gita, your one minute preparation time is up. Please begin speaking. A place that I frequented from the age of 7 to 15, about two to three times each week, is Halt Swimming Pool that is located roughly five kilometers away from my home in my district. And this facility is located about 10 acres of sand. This is a great place for children to practice the aquatic sports. The pool is Olympic sized of 50 meters with the one meter shallow end and four meters at the deeper end. At the deeper end, there are three to five meter of diving boards and two other smaller pools for toddlers and games. I had started going there with my parents when I was a kid for swimming lessons. Then later I went with my peers from school. And of course, there were like lifeguards and trainers who make sure that I won't drown. Between the age of 7 to 15, I learned most of the styles of swimming like front court, backstroke and butterfly. And I attained a lifeguard level of uh, certificates at the age of 15. And I participated in most of the fun events there, like water pole tournament and all the swimming races. I have many emotional memories from the regular visit to this pool. I still remember the first day how scared I was when I swim into the deeper end of the pool. And I was so proud when I won my first race. And um, I remember making friends. Not to mention that being a strong swimmer is giving me more confidence to travel around the different aquatic destinations, especially I went to uh, Goa back in 2018. I took full advantage of the swimming lessons I took uh, as a child. Kita, your two minutes is up. I'm going to stop you there. Can you please just uh, turn over the note papers and put your pen to the side? I'm going to take back the card for now. Uh, please just move the note paper and turn it over, please. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Um, and um, now we'll continue with part three. For part three, I will ask you a question connected to your response and I will ask some more questions related to the topic of part two. Have you been to this swimming pool recently? I must say I haven't been there for a long time. Why not? Uh, because I was so busy with my school and office so I couldn't make time for that. Let's talk about places for children. What are some facilities that are built for children to learn and develop? Um, aside from the pool I have just mentioned, there are a lot of schools built for the development of kids and there are some community centers and playgrounds to encourage the growth of children's well-being. Which of these are government funded and why? I think in most cases, all of these places I have just mentioned are government funded through tax revenue because there is a belief that children have the right to get a universal education and regardless of the socioeconomic status, kids must have the opportunities for development and growth. Which places are good for children to go to for entertainment? Uh, in addition to the pools and playgrounds I've mentioned, there are a lot of theme parks and video arcades and zoo for children to go and hang out with their friends and family. Can you give examples? 
I usually take my niece and nephew to the theme parks once in a week and they have a really good blast with their friends and family so they really enjoy that. Let's talk about physical activity during childhood. It is often said that children these days are not as active as in the past. Do you agree with this statement? Yes, I do. I agree with this statement because children in the past spend more of their time doing outdoor activities such as riding a bike or playing sports, at least even running around. But these days children are preoccupied with their mobile phones and tablets and not spending much time outside. Can you elaborate? I mean, I just read an article recently. It says that children in India spend about 30 hours in the past doing outdoor activities, but that reduced to half an hour these days. Which kinds of physical activities are important for children to participate in? I think activities like swimming is really good for children. It's a really good sports as well as it's life-saving. Games like cricket and football, it's really good for social development. Which ones are less advisable? I think it depends on people. According to me, motor by racing and rock climbing, it's really ill-advised and it can be even fatal. But still, it depends on each person. Okay, that is the end of part three. That concludes the speaking portion of the exam. You will have your mark in a couple days' time. You can check online and you will have all of your marks with your uh, official certificate in the mail in about two weeks' time. Have a great rest of your day, Gita. Remember to take your passport with you. Thank you. Have a good day. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Gita would most likely score anywhere from band 7.5 to a band 8 for her responses to part 1, 2, and 3 of this speaking interview. The examiner is specifically looking for natural language, complex language, and coherent language. Now, in Gita's case, she does quite a good job. In fact, she would be considered a very good user of the English language, missing just one band score from that perfect band 9. So let me explain this in more detail, why she earns this high band and what she could do to perform even better. In part 1, Gita's discussion about clothes is quite clear and accurate. In fact, she understands all of the questions that are being asked of her, and she responds with full sentences using a variety of different grammatical structures, including present perfect, past, conditionals, with good conjunctions, good linking words, and lots of vocabulary with collocations, phrasal verbs, and even some idiomatic language. Overall, she answers the question with a good amount of detail, and it's clear that her answers are original and not really templates that are often used by other students. Templates are simply not effective. A good example of where Gita gives a great response is where she says, I buy clothes according to my needs and my budget. This is a very clear response to the question of when or how often she buys clothes. Furthermore, she connects her answers to her real experience and the real world. When she's asked about what kinds of clothes she usually wears, she expresses that she wears semi-formal clothing, kind of like what she is wearing right now. When she's asked about what she wears on cooler days, again, she connects to the present time and expresses that she wears clothes like she's wearing right now and she wore a jacket that morning coming to the exam. It is very good to take real world content from your experience and connect it with your responses. In addition, she introduces quantitative language. When she is asked what she wears on hot or cold days, she starts by expressing that on hot days, 30 degrees or above, 
This gives more clarity to the listener or the examiner, knowing exactly what Gita considers to be a hot day. Use lots of quantitative language throughout your speaking to improve your marks. However, even in part one, Gita does make a few slight and awkward mistakes with grammar and vocabulary. One good example of this is when she responds with, I usually wear semi-formal clothings. Instead of saying, I usually wear semi-formal clothes. That would be the natural and correct way to express this plural. Be very careful with your use of plurals and singulars, as well as verb tenses, as making these kinds of mistakes will certainly make it very unlikely that you'll score that band 8.5 or 9. Again, in part 2, Gita does a very good job. She answers all of the questions on the cue card. She does not repeat herself, and she stays very specific to the topic and the controlling ideas, using adjective clauses and more complex grammar. Speaking with compound and complex sentences using subordinating conjunctions. Again, we see Gita using good descriptive language and quantitative language. She explains that she used to frequent an Olympic sized pool that was one meter deep in the shallow end and four meters deep in the deep end. It's this kind of language that gets those high band scores. Throughout part two, as well as other parts of her speaking, Gita uses very good collocations. An example of this in part two would be when she says aquatic destinations. From this kind of collocation, it's clear for the examiner that Gita has broad range of grammar and lots of experience using the English language. Nevertheless, again, Gita does make a few awkward mistakes. One such mistake is with her verb tense agreement. She says, I remember how scared I was when I swim into the deep end. She should be saying when I swam because she's talking about a past event. If you watch this interview again carefully, you will notice that the most common mistakes for Gita are plural and singular mismatches with the words and the verbs is and are, as well as verb tense mistakes with the present and the past. These seem to be what's called fossilized mistakes. Even though she's very experienced with English, she has likely made these mistakes time and again, and they have become fossilized in her language. That's why it's so important to catch these early on in your learning. However, if you do have fossilized mistakes, you can correct them, but you really have to pay attention and work hard in order to make sure that you erase these types of inaccuracies in your language. Once again, in part three, Gita continues to do a very good job of her speaking. She answers all of the questions. She understands all of the questions. In part three, comprehension can be difficult because these questions are more specific than part one questions and they do not pertain specifically to you, the candidate, but they are discussing topics in general society. Here, Gita is talking about different experiences in childhood and answering the questions well. Nevertheless, she continues to make those same symptomatic mistakes that she committed in part one and part two. For example, she says, I just read an article to introduce an elaboration. 
Even though it might seem like saying, I just, you would use the present tense, in fact, it's still the past tense because it's not happening now. So she should have said, I just read an article which claimed that children in the past spent more than 20 hours outside playing, but these days they spend less than three hours a day outdoors. You have to be really careful with these types of mistakes, especially when candidates repeat the same mistake, such as a verb tense mistake, as Gita is doing, they will certainly lose a band score. You have to make sure that you do not repeat the same mistake time and again. If you find yourself making a mistake during your interview, stop and correct yourself. Self-correction is natural and it is a great idea. You can save marks by doing this. Nevertheless, a band 8 is a fantastic score. And even if she got a 7.5, that would still suit for most applications to universities and immigration abroad. So good job, Gita. Make sure to practice lots and improve your English for your next IELTS speaking interview. Good luck when you sit the exam. To see over 50 mock interview example lessons with students from around the world with different band scores, explanations, strategies, and examples. Visit and join our premium package at aehelp.com. It's a one-time payment for lifetime access. It's well worth it to get those high band scores on your next IELTS exam. Begin learning for success today. Subscribe to our channel, click over here, watch another video, click right up here, and click our IELTS Hero to join our premium package and get access to all of our videos, practice exams, and a fully interactive course.